introduce today's speaker, Insu Jo, plant ecologist at Manaki Whenua Land Care Research and member of the Beyond Myrtle Rust program. Insu, I'm just going to pass the screen to you now. If you would okay. like to accept that invitation to present, get set up there while I keep doing your introduction. Okay. Speakers, I'd like to let our audience know that you joined us here at Manaki Whenua after getting your PhD from Sur Syracuse, perhaps scrambled the pronunciation there, Syracuse University in New York State and completing a postdoc at Purdue in Indiana. Hopefully, Insu, you are now ready to talk to us about quantifying the importance of the Myrtaceae in New Zealand's ecosystems and you can feel free to get underway. Okay. So can you see my screen? I certainly can. I think you're all good. Okay. 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 Uh, start with. Uh, sorry. You having some That's, trouble changing the slide there? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you can try the so, mouse wheel. Sometimes the keyboard doesn't work, but you can get the mouse wheel to do the job. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you Rini for the introduction and for inviting me for this opportunity to share our study, a part of Beyond Model Rust program at Monarchy Finoa. So first, I would like to thank to my colleagues who have been working on this project with their insights and knowledge on natural forest ecosystems in New Zealand. And I can say that I wouldn't be able to do this work without their support. And Today, I'm going to introduce our forest inventory analysis to quantify ecological importance of Myrtaceae in New Zealand's natural forest ecosystems and determine their functional role in forest ecosystems to assess the potential consequences of model rust. Okay, let me start with a general overview of the Myrtaceae in a global context. So the Myrtaceae is a common, extremely diverse, and often dominant woody plant family distributed across diverse ecosystems, including tropical, subtropical, Mediterranean, and temperate evergreen woody ecosystems. The family is one of the world's most species rich flowering plant families. Myrtaceae is ranked as 10th largest vascular plant family and the third largest tree family in the world. All species are woody with various growth forms from small shrubs to emergent trees, which include one of the world's largest trees, Centrion in Australia. The family produces plenty of flowers and fruits, which provide resources for diverse organisms, including fungi, insects, birds, and mammals. The family includes many species with economic importance, for example, as timber trees, edible fruits, spices, oils, and also for ornamental trees. In New Zealand, there are four native Mortisi tribes, Leptospermi, which includes Manuka and Kanuka, uh, Metrocedary, this includes Potukawa, Southern Rata, Northern Rata, and some Metrocedarous woody climbers. Murti, which includes uh, Lophomotus and Neomotus, and Saijiji, uh, that includes a single species in New Zealand, Saijiji and Mare. And these make up six genera and 28 species of trees and woody climbers. They are quite important component in diverse forests and shrublands in New Zealand. For example, the canopy tree Metrocedarus sambellara, southern rata, occurs from shoreline to mountain tree lines in the western South Island, from early successional to old growth forests. Also, Manuka and Kanuka dominate across diverse environments, in particular during early and mid successional stages. Recently, the family is under threat by moral rust, a disease caused by a fungal pathogen, Australopoxenia fustii, which arrived in New Zealand in 2017 and is rapidly spreading across the nation. The spread of the moral rust is of concern in particular for forests where Myrtaceae species dominates because it has wide host specificity within the family. However, our ability to forecast these impacts is limited because of the lack of comparative analysis of woody families. 
So our primary goal was to quantify Mertesi importance across natural forest ecosystems in New Zealand based on uh, their diversity and abundance. Then to test the environmental drivers of the importance. And using functional trade approach, we aim to determine how Mertesi is different from other co-occurring woody families in terms of their functional traits. And finally, we aim to compare the family's contribution to the whole community weighted functional traits relative to their importance values to determine their potential functional role in New Zealand's natural forest ecosystems. So let me start with the first topic, a quantification of Mertesi importance. For this purpose, we use vegetation inventory data that have been collected from New Zealand national programs, the land use and carbon analysis system managed by Ministry for the Environment, and the National Biodiversity Monitoring and Reporting System managed by Department of Conservation. And this map shows the plot locations included in our analysis set up by these national programs. And the plots are located on the intersections of an eight kilometer grid superimposed on land. And the locations cover the forested natural ecosystems in New Zealand. So the empty spaces are mostly farmlands, grasslands, or disturbed area, non-forested areas. For these plots, we compile species, species level cover and basal area from vegetation inventory data collected from 2009 to 2014. Uh, this is the formula used to calculate the importance value. This metric has been developed by Mori et al. to describe a forest structure in a lowland forest community in Brazil. Uh, using this formula, you can calculate the taxonomic group importance based on its relative richness and abundance in a given community. So for example, let's assume a hypothetical forest community where the total tree richness is 10 and total basal area is 20 meters square per hectare. And if there is a tree, a tree family A that has five species and two meters square of basal area, then you can calculate the importance value like this based on their relative richness and basal area. Uh, in Mori et al's study, their uh, focus was uh, just a tree community and they only considered tree richness and basal area for the metric. However, we have uh, small stature shrubs and trees and woody climbers in New Zealand and they don't necessarily have basal area measurements taken in the field unless they have sizable stems like trees. So we modified the original formula by adding a relative cover to represent our whole woody flora in New Zealand forest ecosystems. So we calculated importance values for woody families by incorporating richness, basal area, and cover measurements from the inventory data. So here are the three components used for the importance calculation, relative richness, relative basal area, and relative cover of woody families found in our study plots. So even just looking at uh, these individual components of importance value, we see Mertesi poses very important ecological position across New Zealand wood ecosystems by having the second highest relative cover and basal area and the fifth highest relative richness. After combining all of these components, we calculated a familial importance of major woody families found in New Zealand natural ecosystems. So, and here is the result. The major woody families in New Zealand forests are ranked in descending order of their mean importance values across plots. And we found that Mertesi is the second most important family in New Zealand forests and shrublands ecosystems, following the North of Agassi. Mertesi is more important than Rubiaceae, Podocarpaceae, and Cunoniaceae, families that include some of the most common New Zealand tree and shrub species uh, like Coprasma, Rimu, and Kamahi. It is also notable that uh, Mertesi was the only family that climbers substantially contributed to the importance value. So as you see the yellow on the top of the Mertesi bar, 
it's almost 17 percent. This is highly unusual globally since Mertesi species comprise almost entirely freestanding growth forms, mostly trees. In, uh, even in many world plant books, growth forms of Mertesi do not include climbers at all, so it's really unique feature in New Zealand. In our studied plots, Mertesi climber species, all our Mertesiders species, comprise almost a quarter of all climber species in New Zealand. So I should have a minute to give you a brief summary of the functional difference of these Mertesi climbers later in this talk. Uh, at tribal level, so I partitioned the importance value by tribe, and we found that leptospermy, represented by Manuka and Kanuka, and metrosideri, that include uh, metrosideros trees and climbers, contributed the most of the Mertesi importance, followed by Merti and Saijiji. Uh, after quantifying the importance, we further tested the environmental drivers of the importance. So if you uh, place all the inventory plots we used on the bivariate axis of annual mean precipitation and temperature, you see plots are located in wide environmental gradients, which is great to test the effects of environments on the Martis importance. Uh, we took these two key climatic variables. They're closely linked to plant distribution in general. And also forest extended structure variables, total tree richness, tree density, and tree basal area for each plot. And we modeled Mertesi importance as a, a function of these environmental variables using spatial model, incorporating a spatial order correlation across the plots based on their geo coordinates. And here is the result. The overall, uh, greater Mertesi importance values were associated with uh, variables related to early forest successional stages, such as low tree richness, high tree density, and low tree basal area. But if you look at uh, tribe and growth form level analysis, you can find the overall pattern is driven by Leptospermy, the Kunjia and Leptospermum species which had the greatest contribution to the Mertesi importance. As opposed to Leptospermy and trees, Merti, the yellow, and climbers, the light greens, are associated with high tree richness and tree basal area, and low tree density features associated with old growth forests. For the climate, Mertesi importance was positively associated with mean annual precipitation and temperature, which is consistent to uh, findings from other um, previous species distribution modeling of Mertesi. The climate, climatic effects are more consistent across tribes and cross forms, except for the negative association of leptospermy with mean annual precipitation. The overall warmer and wetter areas have greater importance of Mertesi, represented by its higher abundance and richness. This adds to concerns to, uh, uh, that more rust may have significant impacts on the conservation of at-risk species and the functional integrity of New Zealand ecosystems, because the climate favorable to Mertesi is also favorable to the fungal pathogen. Next, we wanted to know uh, how Mertesi species are compared with other co-occurring woody families according to functional traits related to key ecosystem processes. So here are the traits we selected for their relevance to plant growth and reproduction and ecosystem functions. Specific leaf area, SLA, and leaf nitrogen are associated with photosynthetic capacity and growth rate. Seed mass with establishment success, maximum height with light competition, and tissue density such as leaf dry matter contents, LDMC, and wood density with longevity and decomposition rates. Using these traits, we conducted a principal component analysis uh, uh, using all the species, a uh, multivariate analysis to compare uh, multivariate trait patterns of Mertesi with other co uh, major co occurring with the families. 
And here is the result showing trait variations across a species on the two primary axes determined from the principal componental analysis. So each dot represents a species and the circle size is proportional to its abundance based on the vegetation cover. The results are pretty good. The axis explained uh, about 57% uh, of trait variation across those species included, included in this analysis. And now I highlighted uh, different families on the same principal components space. Uh, red cross in each panel represents a family centroid with standard deviation of all species in the family. So here we found Overall, Mertesi occupied in a different region with the, uh, uh, in the trace space, space compared to other uh, woody families. And they are uh, more closely related to high wood density and maximum heights. And this is the same figure with the previous one, but labeled different uh, Mertesi subgroups. Uh, as you see within Mertesi, Mertesi species clustered into several subgroups, which relate to fast, slow plant growth strategies. For example, Mertesi climbers have traits associated with the fast growth, uh, the high SLA and high leaf nitrogen, whereas trees have on the opposite sides uh, with the low quality leaf traits really related to the slow growth rate. Mertis species were uh, located on the short height and low wood density, and size germ is associated with uh, high seed mass. And the distinct spatial pattern of these subgroups across the functional trait space suggests that there are these divergent roles in ecosystem processes, such as productivity and nutrient cyclings. And I showed earlier that Mertesi climbers have a significant contribution to the Mertesi importance values. And we further looked at how Mertesi climbers are different from other climbers in New Zealand based on those functional traits using the same analysis. And we found that Mertesi climbers are functionally different indeed from other climbers in New Zealand forests. So I circled all the Mertesi climbers uh, in the previous slide, Mortis climbers were associated with higher SLA and leaf nitrogen compared to other trees. But just within the climbers, you see the Mortis climbers are associated with traits uh, uh, related to slow growth than, other, than others. So this may explain abundance of Mertesi climbers in mature forest ecosystems in New Zealand where light is really limiting. But still, there needs more studies to determine the physiology and ecological role of Mertesi climbers in forest ecosystems in New Zealand compared to other widespread climbing species. Finally, we try to determine uh, functional significance of Mertesi in forest ecosystems using community-weighted functional traits. So community-weighted mean traits are abundance-weighted functional traits. So the values can be used to approximate uh, community-level ecosystem functioning related, related to the traits. And we used this metric to determine Mertesi contribution to the ecosystem functions because the traits we chosen were tightly linked to how ecosystem functions, such as carbon and nutrient cycling. So first we calculated community weighted mean trait values at the plot level for each family by summing the trait values of species weighted by their relative abundance in the plot. Then we determined what is the contribution to community weighted trait values relative to their importance value to assess the potential impacts of the loss of Mertesi on ecosystem functions. So if the value is positive, that means the family is contributing more to the community weighted functional trait value than expected from its familial importance values and vice versa. So here are uh, the results of a familiar contribution to the community weighted functional traits relative to their importance. So I'm just presenting two most interesting results here, wood density and maximum height. 
So here we found more tasty contributed 18% more for community weighted mean wood density and 45% more for maximum height relative to their importance values. Uh, this result suggests that Mertes is a very important source of carbon store since high wood density is associated with slow decay rate after trees die, and tall stature trees can accumulate more biomass. The greater contribution to community weighted mean and wood density is not only driven by tree species, but also by climbers, which had quite different functional traits from other non martesi climbers, as we saw earlier. Okay, so here's a summary. So we quantified familial importance of major wood families in New Zealand natural forest ecosystems and found Mertesi is the second most ecological, ecologically important to the family. And climbers had a large contribution to the importance. We also showed that climate and forest standard structure have a significant effects on the importance and the effects vary across the subgroups. The so family has a distinct functional trait spectrum associated with high wood density and tall stature, ensuring large and enduring carbon stocks. Given the distinct combination of functional traits of Mertesi and its contribution to community-weighted functional traits, it is unlikely that any other native family could replace its function. Therefore, the spread of marl rust can have a potentially large and deleterious impacts on forest ecosystems in New Zealand. So here we haven't accounted for different species level susceptibility to the pathogen due to lack of enough data, but incorporating the updated susceptibility data and longer term demographic rate, uh, uh, demographic studies can help better quantify the impact of more rust on Martesi and ecosystem functions in New Zealand natural ecosystems. Uh, I would like to let you know that this work has been published earlier this year in Journal of Vegetation Science. So please take a look at the paper if you are interested in uh, more details. It's open access article. And thank you for your time. And this work has, uh, has been funded from MB toward Beyond Model Versus the Program. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Insu, for that excellent and wide-ranging talk. There's certainly a lot of material there. There are a couple of questions coming into the chat box now, which is great, but I'm just going to give you a warm-up one of my own, I think. You talked okay. about these climbers, and I was wondering whether you had any thoughts about why they are so common here. Is there a niche gap? Um, are we missing in New Zealand perhaps another family that might typically fill that role? You mean the Mertesi or the... Well, I, often um, when an organism behaves in an unusual way in a particular biogeographic location, it's posited that there is another organism missing, right? Like birds right. in New Zealand behaving like mammals. Do you think this could be the case here with the climbers? Uh, uh, maybe, yeah, I think so. There are so many... Uh, complex interactions between organisms. Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure, but yeah, definitely, yeah, there should be some uh, evolutionary history effects on the distribution of Mertesi in New Zealand because New Zealand is uh, uh, New Zealand has been isolated such a long time, so there should be some effects. Uh, so perhaps something good to research in the future. Um, yep. And I was also interested to hear your use of these databases. They just show what a fantastic resource this kind of data is, um, that you know, you've know you turned, turned that into this great paper in this great study. Do you know how often those databases are updated? Uh, so uh, so the, the, actually the data is from the permanent plot and and the uh, New Zealand government actually, the survey, uh, the forest inventories, uh, at least every decade, I think. So it's, it gets continually updated over and over again. So in the future, I guess we can have some repeated measures so can we can see the changes in the composition of Mertesi. So we can better understand the uh, motor rust effects. 
Yes, I think so. All right, let's get on to some questions from the audience. Now, this is a little bit of a curly one. Given the predisposition of Myrtaceae to favour warmer, wetter areas alongside the rust fungus, in other words, there's a nice match there, unfortunately, with pathogen host uh, and climate, where there is a widespread outbreak of rust, do you have any ideas on what might be the most appropriate control method for attempting to eliminate rust outbreaks? For example, would you recommend harvesting infected manuka and kanaka on farms in order to limit the spread of the fungus? Of course, this, this person is getting right to the heart of one of the most challenging questions facing us in New Zealand at the moment with this disease. Right. Ah. Uh... Ah, uh, okay. So, so I'm not a patho pathologist, but yeah, given the nature of the fungal pathogen, they can spread anywhere. So just removing just a patch or, or some limited area, I don't think that can prevent spread of the pathogen. So I guess in the long term, maybe it's a um, good idea to uh, you know uh, develop the uh, new uh, the uh, new breed with you know resistant to more rust, I think that can help. So if we have that bread, then we can dilute the genetic information and to make the the species more close to the original species uh, genetic composition. I think that's the ideal. Indeed, that that kind of long term solution um, is likely to be some kind of answer because yes, of course, if you remove your infectious hosts, then the disease is gone, but so have the hosts. Right. <laughs> and your study has shown um, how valuable these species really are to New Zealand's ecosystems. All right, the second question here. Thanks for a great presentation. I was wondering if there is a group of functional traits within Myrtaceae that makes plants more likely to be infected with myrtle rust. I know we've we've had some limited study on that in New Zealand within the program. I'm not sure whether there's been more done overseas. Are you, do you have any awareness of that, Insu? Uh, uh, I, I guess in natural ecosystems, uh, uh, the Mertesi are, you know, uh, coexist with other uh, other other plant species. So uh, even uh, even the functional traits of just neighboring plant species can uh, affect the the infection. I think. Uh, yeah. Well, that, but that's right. Yeah, yeah. But because if the moral rust is a fungal disease, maybe if uh, if if the the trees uh, trees are really tall, then maybe they can, um, you know, it's ventilated more easily than really dense uh, stems. So they can prevent the fungal uh, spreads, I guess. Yeah, I think environment as well as plant traits certainly matter um, with all diseases. And in this case, high humidity is key. Right. Yeah. Rust needing wet leaves to infect. So plants may in fact be better off where they're a bit more dispersed and yeah just just in terms of that functional traits question research is going on uh, in the area in the program we have not found any kind of smoking gun yet i believe yeah. um but it's still early stages uh moving on to what is the last question oh another one's um popped up we do have time for a couple more if you'd like to get them in people yeah. Uh, right, and another, they, they are all Myrtle Rust based uh, at the moment, but then this is a Myrtle Rust webinar series. So we'll have a go into you. Um, thank you for an informative presentation, and I know this, this is out of your area of specialty, but you did make us see the whole forest. I'm wondering what we know about the mechanisms used by ApeCDI to identify a suitable host among all forest species. Um, I can comment on that a little. Did you want to comment uh, into you? Uh, so I, uh, I actually I have no idea about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah. middle rust obviously lands where it lands, right? It's going to blow um, right. in a light upon a leaf. And research within the program does show that it commences its next stage as in attempting to germinate and penetrate 
the plant in the same way, no matter what species it's on. It's like running a pre-programmed action. Um, so it doesn't identify a suitable host. It either wins or it doesn't. It's, it's either going to get into the plant or it's going to fail to do so or, or get in and the plant will then uh, have a hypersensitive response, which means it can defend itself to some extent. Yeah. Um, and myrtle rust is a systemic infection or more localised, like in the foliage. Um, myrtle rust is not a systemic infection, at least that's not my understanding, uh, with the caveat that I'm not a plant pathologist either. Um, yes, it's localised typically in uh, leaves in the foliage, but we're also seeing it infect new tissue of all kinds, including yep. stems, flowers and fruits. So that's certainly concerning. Yep. Now, this is an excellent question here. So I'm going to put this one to you. Do you think planting more resistant trees could be a solution? Or would you expect other tree species to replace the role of some of the key functional traits like carbon storage, resource storage. So I guess it's asking to what extent do you think other species might be able to fill in for those that we could lose? Uh, yeah, so it's a matter of the uh, the focus. If we are just focusing on carbon, then maybe we can find the suitable species, but there are so many other uh, functional role of amartase and we don't know much about that. So yeah. So, uh, so we, we are planning to look at uh, uh, this uh, actually this aspect of so how the loss of Martesi tree species can uh, be replaced replaced by other species, but uh, it's really a hard question. So, <laughs> so yeah, we don't know until we have a full understanding of their functions. Indeed. Now, one thing that stood out as interesting to me um, from your study is this business of high wood density and maximum height importance. When I think Mutasi, um, I tend to think of the tea trees, and of course you're talking about climbers, right. you don't think of them as tall trees. You, you think of them as kind of slightly scrawny things that, as you say, are pioneer species. They're coming in first. They're not the forest giants. Here you have this result um, that density and, and maximum height is important, um, which right. perhaps just goes to show the importance of these kinds of studies because it shows that we can have visions and images in our minds that are just not quite right. right. Can right. you comment on what might be driving this, um, in particular, maximum height? So, uh, so, so we utilize the whole the. A natural forest community across New Zealand. So we are not just focusing on Manuka and Kanuka, but previous studies actually focusing on those species because they they're uh, the economic importance and cultural importance. Uh, but we included included other the larger tree species as well, and also the for the community weighted uh, traits. Uh, so it's a relative. So uh, even the tea trees are small, but tea tree dominated plots community, they are actually the tallest tree. So I think that I can affect the results. Yes, I can understand how that might be. All right, well, we don't have any more questions. Um, and I think this is probably a good time to wrap it up anyway. And thank you very much again, and congratulations on that pub publication. I'm sure it's going to be a useful resource for many for years to come and inspire some further studies. A video of today's webinar will be made available on the Beyond Myrtle Rust website in the next couple of days, and it will also be emailed to everyone who registered. Now, the next webinar will be on Wednesday, May 11th. We will hear from Michelle Moffat, a senior lecturer at the University of Western Sydney. She will be telling us about the learnings from a recent publication in her talk, and her talk will be titled Using Metabolites as Biomarkers for the Identification of Resistance to Myrtle Rust and Early Stage Infection. So right back to the Myrtle Rust focus there. Look out for that invite after Easter. Have a great break, everybody. We are nearly there. And that's it for today. Hi, da. See you next time.